Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today here in the new Aqua Centrum in the city of Garching, nearby the research center of the Technical University of Munich. As most of you know, the founder of Aqua Centrum, Yasin Akün, that moved from Munich city to here in this hot summer 2018 is a graduate of this renowned university that is in the top 25 of international ranking. When I came to here by subway, most of the passengers were talking in English. Some of the students cannot speak more than a couple of German words. So I will try to speak in English today to you and I hope you can understand me. This extraordinary hot summer 2018, I know that Mr. Trump says they call it weather and climate change is a fake news, but whatever makes the summer as hot as it is and as it never was here, it makes thirsty. And this is my topic. What shall we drink in the future? What is our knowledge about drinking today? And so the title of my speech is The Drinking Revolution in Hydrogen Age. Today is Assumption Day, which is a holiday in Bavaria. And people are consuming amazing amounts of beer. But I want to talk about drinking water. Because the science about that is going up like a rocket. At first, I must say that since the beginning of human history, drinking water has been a fundamental problem. Because water is known to germinate very quickly and with great pleasure. Before that, Homo sapiens had to protect themselves from the start. Here you can see the first water treatment pot found by archaeologists in the world. Ceramic from China, 20,000 years old. A Chinese emperor named Shen Nang is said to have lived around 2737 before Christ and to have passed a law that requires drinking water to be boiled. It is probably the oldest regulation on food safety. In our time, Almost 5,000 years later, water is still not a safe beverage worldwide. And Louis Pasteur saying that 90% of all illnesses are transmitted by drinking water is still a global reality today. Water drinking is still a problem. And for a long time, the solution was called drink tea or brew beer. For producing these two first cultural drinks, water must be boiled. And with the addition of tea, spices and alcohol, made from grain malt, water can be kept longer even in warm temperatures. The Chinese and other civilizations have a high tea drinking culture. And since about 3500 before Christ in Mesopotamia, the Sumerians had discovered liquid bread as a staple food, with which food and drink could be combined in a relatively harmless form. Some researchers even think that beer brewing started before baking bread. In ancient Egypt, there were 17 types of beer. 
which were also accepted as a means of payment, as the US dollar is today still. From the Code of Hammurabi to the Barbarian Purity Law for Beer, drinking water laws from older sources are rather scarce, because the technology of filtering water so that it is, it is safe to drink without being boiled did not make its breakthrough until the 20th century. So it is like that drinking water became possible in the first place. The first highly effective water filter seems to have been invented by ancient Greek sailors who ran out of drinking water on their long voyages at the sea. Aristotle reports in the 4th century before Christ of a porous vessel made of clay and bees wax, which was sunk to the seabed. Due to the high external pressure, the water is pressed into the vessel and cleaned of salt. It was not until the 20th century after Christ that NASA developed its intelligent method for today's reverse osmosis, which with, with, with also uses pressure differences so that astronauts can even drink their own urine again. The ancient Greeks had even developed from the first water filter an early form of the atomic theory. Some philosophers concluded that something existed like matter that can no longer be filtered. That is, particles in the smallest indivisible form, for example, Thales of Millet said, that water is ultimately in everything and is the smallest of all particles and thus indivisible. Thales of Millet was a mathematician. Antoine de Lavoisier was the gunpowder administrator to the French king and he proved that water is quite divisible. He put a shotgun barrel over a very hot stove and let water through until it dissolved into two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. That was just before the French Revolution, which of course caused Lavoisier his head. Yet it was much more important a revolution in science, the million years old belief that water is a primordial element had dissolved into two gases. And the remarkable thing was, from these gases, a part of the energy put into the oven could be taken out again. If hydrogen and oxygen are combined with a spark, they form water again after a big bang. Water is not an element, although many, many, many people still believe this today. Splitting water into gases is also less effort. This requires electrical power from a battery that is DC. It was invented by the Italian Alessandro Volta. He thought, money does not stink, but it tickles as I put coins made of different metals on my wet tongue. So, Volta became a power stacker because the more coins and damp water cloths he layered, the more electricity flowed. So, he invented the battery and recognized water as an electrolyte. The Italian gourmet even realized that the water on one coin tasted acidic while the other tasted alkaline. The German physicist 
Johann Wilhelm Ritter was penniless and had no money to burn, but he treated frog legs and himself with different metals and noted where the frog was twitching best. In a letter to Walter in 1798, he described the different voltage values, redox potentials of individual metals. Thus, the battery could be systematically improved and then Britta invented also the reloadable battery. For example, the redox potentials of gold is plus 1.68 volt and that of lithium is minus 3.04 volt. Due to the voltage difference, one could construct a 4.72 volt lithium gold battery. Of course, a cheaper version is possible and need. It has been clear since Lavoisier that water can be broken down into gases with thermolysis, what means great heat. But with the new form of energy, electricity from a battery, it was easier. That became known in 1800 in England and Germany, while the other researchers enjoyed the explosive gas. Johann Wilhelm Ritter once again wanted to know more than the others how much, how much of the gas will be released if I split water with the electricity with the aid of so-called electrolysis. But strangely enough his gasification experiment found that the ratio of oxygen dark blue in the lower left to hydrogen, light blue in the lower left, was about 1 to 2.5 and not 1 to 2 as it should be according to the H2O formula. What happened there? It was also strange that the unsplit red colored water in the tube became acidic with the oxygen while the purple colored water on the right became alkaline. The originally neutral green colored water during the migration had thus changed in pH when it was split into the two gases. This mystery was solved by Hoffmann's water decomposition apparatus invented in the 19th century. Only if the two gases are first allowed to gas out through a purified water for about 10 minutes and it is sealed on the top, it is the correct gas ratio of H2O possible. That is, a different part of oxygen and hydrogen first dissolve in the water and they don't even bubble out until the water is saturated with the respective gas. Water can dissolve significantly Currently, more oxygen than hydrogen. With hydrogen at 20 degrees Celsius, it is 1.7 milligrams per liter. And with oxygen, it is 45.5 milligrams per liter. So, some part of the electrolysis gases disappear in the water. And so, the targeted production of hydrogen saturated water and oxygen saturated water is technically feasible. In the 21st century, it was discovered that hydrogen water is the ideal form of drinking water. In addition, the more or less alkaline 
character change of the water also possibly plays a role and can make some other benefits that are not yet researched as the function of dissolved molecular hydrogen gas in water. The fact that water as a drink is not always full of bacteria and pollutants and should be boiled was already well known in the 19th century. There were already systematic representations of natural healing sources, meaning the customers of healthy water. But most of these naturally healthy waters don't tend to be where the patients are. And not everyone can afford to be healed in a spa. The original medicinal waters also seemed to lose their effect when transported to the patient. This gave the Dresden pharmacist Friedrich Adolf August Struve, 1821, the idea to produce synthetic medicinal water. He made them based on their mineral composition and produced them in the major European cities. This went on, on until the middle of the 20th century and he was financially pretty lucrative until it was realized there must be something else in the water that is beneficial apart from the minerals. We know today it's all about hydrogen gas. Another idea for the production of artificial mineral waters was developed by the electrochemist Botho Graf von Schwerin with his Berlin-based Electroosmosis AG, which got a patent for a remarkable electrolysis machine in 1923. The minerals in the water are indeed present as different electrically charged ions, which one can direct arbitrarily with the help of a direct current. The membranes can then separate the ions and mix them together again. So the origin of the technique that I want to introduce to you today actually lies in Berlin. However, it was the Munich engineer Alphonse Natura who established a proper business out of this water. He turned it into a medicine using electrolysis for 50 years. He called it hydropurel and sold three variants in pharmacies, alkaline, acidic and pH neutral water. From the 1960s, pH neutral electrolyte water disappeared from the market because Natura realized that it could be produced by mixing the acidic alkaline varieties. Since the 1950s, electrolyte water with two variants was also developed in Japan and from the 1970s in the former Soviet Union. There, the water was promoted intensively with a secret government research program. Alphonse Natura's last water factory in Bavaria was closed after his death in 1981. As early as 1962, the first electrolyzer was certified as a medical device in Japan. In 1965, the local Ministry of Health certified the following applications 
alkaline electrolyte waters helps to combat chronic diarrhea. Indigestion, abnormal fermentation in the stomach and intestine and disturbed acidity regulation in the digestive tract. It supports the metabolism of the healthy intestinal flora. In 1966, Yoshimi Sano re revolutionized the technology of electrolytic water by developing the first so-called domestic water ionizers. Thus, electrolyte water was freed from the central production in a factory and well-known Japanese clinics applied its use devotedly. The name alkaline ionized water was coined and when a television series reported the healing successes in 1992, the number of devices sold above one million. From Japan via Korea the customer came to America and from there back to Germany. Where since 2004, modern water ionizer can always be bought. As the alkaline water boom slowly overlapped into the Western world, the hitherto unknown results of the Russian speaking researchers gradually penetrated. In a nutshell, they said that. The alkaline pH value was less responsible for the observable health effects than the negative redox potential. But that was a slap in the face for the acid alkaline apostle Robert O. Young in America, who made millions with his books on pH diets. But in fact, the extraordinary potential of this water, which is also the subtitle of my book on electroactivated water, was evidently more plausible. The redox potential of the basic electrolyte water is apparently inexplicably negative, up to minus zero point eight volts. This cannot be explained by the available ions that are charge carriers. The Russian professor Witold Bakir even thought that he had found or discovered a new chapter in chemistry to explain the excitement. A negative redox potential means a high excess of electrons and thus a high readiness to deliver them. This is a hallmark of rust inhibitors and all sorts of anti-aging formulas. In short, this potential is antioxidant and therefore medically of great importance in intercepting free radicals. Immediately, water ionizers were relabeled as antioxidant water. But there was a Japanese doctor who did the most extensive research and he said, yes, antioxidant, but this negative redox potential can be removed from the water within minutes if it is whirled. This was first recognized by Dr. Hidemitsu Hayashi. So it must be an antioxidant substance that is spun out, which is responsible for the unusually low redox potential. And only the hydrogen produced during electrolysis was questioned because oxygen is known to be oxidative. Dr. Hayashi brought the Japanese cell researcher Sanitaka Shirahata 
in 1997 to investigate various healing waters in more detail and to find a common factor with the alkaline ionized water. And lo and behold, the results were exactly what Hayashi had long suspected. It is not the redux potential which is the common factor, but rather the hydrogen contained in the water that acts as an antioxidant on a cellular level. The effect was even stronger than that of vitamin C and equals the antioxidants of our body like SOD, superoxide, dismutase. Shirahata's study had only one flaw. He found only atomic hydrogen, which is actually very unstable. After all, it took 10 years for molecular hydrogen and not atomic hydrogen to be the deciding factor that we know now. But what is the connection? Plus 1.68 volts I mentioned earlier is the high positive redox potential of gold. In our body, the combustion of high oxygen or radiation damage often produces substances with an even higher potential. For example, the hydroxyl radical at plus 2.3 volts. That does not make this molecule any more valuable than gold. But incredibly damaging because it is the most dangerous electron rubber. It can even tear out parts of your DNA and thereby damage the genome of the cells. On the other hand, the body would be completely powerless if it did not have the molecular free gassing hydrogen produced by bacteria in our large intestine. Until 2007, people were not sure what hydrogen gas in the body was good for. Because until then it was regarded as inert, that is, unresponsive to any kind of reaction. It just steamed outwards by breathing, through the skin, or simply in the form of flatulence. The discovery that hydrogen reacts to the health-critical hydroxyl radicals and ultimately turns them into harmless water can probably be considered a milestone in medicine today. The lead investigator was Japanese Shigeo Ota. Hydrogen does not even worry itself with small parasites. It is only available for the showdown of the most harmful radicals. A selective antioxidant. The sprinkler system of the body. Only when it really burns does it intervene with water. Why do humans have such a big head with such a large brain compared to our relatives, the chimpanzee? Because evolution has shortened the colon per centimeter of large intestine, which is shortened, can more cerebral cells grow. This has meanwhile been calculated mathematically without a shadow of doubt. What falls too short is the hydrogen budget, of course. Less colon also benefits less hydrogen producing bacteria and therefore more damage from oxidative stress in form of free radicals. This deficiency, which evolution has complained about, 
can be compensated by consuming hydrogen from the exterior. It's that easy when you know it. It's similar to the Nobel Prize winning NO nitric oxide. For example, before it was known for regulating blood pressure as a single signal molecule, it was considered unnecessary and even harmful nonsense. Well, from such findings you can really make billions as seen with the potency pill Viagra, which is ultimately based on this nitric oxide effect. Naturally, many researchers are now also checking this with hydrogen. About 1,000 scientists are currently researching the role of hydrogen worldwide. And the world market for hydrogen as a nutritional supplement was, according to reputable estimates, already around 850 million euros per year. At least Garth Nicholson, a cell biologist in California, has been proposed for the Nobel Prize. In 2015, he reviewed and evaluated the research results on hydrogen in medicine that have taken place since 2007. 2015, there are promising approaches everywhere. Successful approaches have been reported for inflammation, autoimmune diseases, ulcers, nerve and skin diseases, infections and blood poisoning, cancer, radiation, damage, strokes, cardiovascular diseases. A key issue is the new mass illness, diabetes and also kidney diseases and obesity, of course. All this is not yet established in conventional medicine after such a so short time. But in China, Japan, Korea, the USA and, by the way, Bavaria, one tries to transform this into practical medicine very concretely. You see at Ali, 2014, what is already very known is the pharmacokinetics of hydrogen. When does it reach? Which organ? organ? And for how long, for example, when you have drunk hydrogen water? Everything, everything happens in minutes. After drinking a glass of hydrogenated water, this is the foundation for specific research, because research means measuring and the publications have been published in high-level scientific journals, like here in Nature. Let's take a quick look at this new shooting star of medicine, which naturally also magically attracts alternative medicine, because pharmacists of all countries unite. This substance is not for you, because it is the most common in the universe and therefore cheap. 75% of the total mass of the universe is hydrogen. But on our planet Earth, it is more of a scarce good. Only 0.12% of the total mass is hydrogen. So, where is it? Well, I think you can say that hydrogen is the gas of life. Because in all of our, our mitochondrial cells, the only thing that works is that in the end, the hydrogen is taken out of the food. This is what Albert Schent-Jurgi 
pointed out in his Nobel Prize speech in 1937. And now, with electrolysis and water ionizers over the least 80 years, we have developed mass compatible devices to enrich our drinking water with hydrogen and do something good for us. Since the 1990s, water ionizers have been developed. Not only do they enrich water with hydrogen, but also make it slightly alkaline, so that the so-called alkaline activated water also helps to prevent or control chronic acidity. And since 2010, devices have been developed that are called hydrogen generators or hydrogen boosters. They are usually smaller than the alkaline water ionizers and also cheaper to buy. The hydrogen boosters have become very popular very quickly because they are more of their mobility and their USB compatibility. They make them a product for the smartphones generation. Clever apps for personal health monitoring has been made, has made this uh, generation more much interested in health issues at an early age compared to previous generations. The smallest hydrogen boosters solve the long known problem that although the antioxidant power of the activated water can be preserved for a few days by keeping it in a full gas tight bottle, but as soon as the bottle is opened, the hydrogen is clearly released within an hour. And the power of the water disappears. After two to three hours, it is already half gone. On the other hand, you can even screw mineral water bottles onto most booster systems so that you can supply yourself with hydrogen from clean water wherever you are and even if you have no filter. Of course, now there is also hydrogen water in multi-layered aluminum bags to buy uh, or something like this. The cost is about 10 times as much as mineral water and it is not exactly environmentally friendly. There are even those cans, at least in the USA, where the environment minister has nothing to say, but the hydrogen content is so far from that of a hydrogen booster, which creates concentrations of up to 6,000 ppb or 6 ppm due to its overpressure system. It is important to determine the hydrogen content correctly. This is most easily done with chemical reagents based on methylene blue with a colloidal platinum which decolors per drop when hydrogen is actually present. It is often measured with a cheap electronic measuring device from Trustlex, which cannot measure the hydrogen contract, the content at all because it has only a redox electrode. However, the conversion of the redox potential into a hydrogen value according to the so-called Nernst equation only gives correct results if apart from hydrogen there are no other substances with redox potentials in the water. So 
only with distilled water, at least. More detailed explanations and measurement tables you can find in my book, Electroactivated Water, an invention with extraordinary potential, which you can get in the bookshops or as a free PDF if you send me a short email to the shown address. My name is Arselbaum at uh, web.de or you just stop the video now and use the Q QR key code. Higher hydrogen concentrations can also be achieved with hydrogen fizz tablets depending on the amount of water they dissolve in. They are based on the reaction of the water with pure magnesium metal. However, very high concentrations are often associated with some taste problems and produce unpleasant sensations with gold teeth or amalgam fillings in the mouth. Most people find the tastiest water is that of a modern water ionizer and has a full saturation of 1600 ppb of dissolved hydrogen. That means it has a content of 1.6 milligram of hydrogen per liter. Just to compare, already 0 0.5 milligrams of hydrogen in water per liter is considered by most scientists to be therapeutically effective. The redox potential of such water is then about minus 600 milliwatts. Now let me explain the difference between a water ionizer and a hydrogen booster. Both devices are used to produce hydrogen-rich water for drinking. On the right, you can see the booster with the so-called PEM cell. The upper side, which has to be filled with clean drinking water or mineral water, it produces hydrogen bubbles that are made by electrolyzing the water. Under pressure, these bubbles dissolve very well in the water. Otherwise, nothing changes. The pH and the mineralization of the water remains the same. The oxygen which is produced simultaneously during electrolysis is released downwards with a valve into the air. On the left side the water ionizer receives tap water which flows from bottom to top first through a water filter in order to clean it of any pollutants. Then it reaches the electrolytic cell, the two chambers, in the left chambers, alkaline hydrogen water with an elevated pH, and in the right chamber, acidic oxygen water. Not only are the resulting water gases separated, but also the ions present in the water. The negatively charged migrate into the right chamber with the acidic water, the positively charged, which include the valuable calcium and magnesium, accumulate in the left chamber with the alkaline hydrogen water, which is then called alkaline activated water or Kangen water or aqua volta or all sorts of other names. The, Russian the Russians call it, for example, living water.
in the hydrogen booster or in freshly bottled water from a water ionizer you can see small and larger bubbles rising. It is often claimed that this would represent the particular performance of the device. The bubbles only indicate that hydrogen is being produced. The decisive factor is how much hydrogen dissolves in the water. The larger the bubbles become, the lower is the probability of dissolution. The bubbles that can be solved are so small that you cannot see them with the naked eye. Domestic water ionizers have been around since the 1960s. They are highly developed today, but they usually cost between 1000 and 2000 euro or even more from some companies like this one. Nevertheless, despite the competition from the hydrogen boosters, they are becoming increasingly popular, especially among populations over the age of 40. At this age, the consequences of our acid-rich lifestyle are noticeable to almost everyone. Sweets, fries, and meat, coffee, alcohol, and acidic sparkling water have been depleting alkaline buffers reserves in the body for decades. And so it happens that the affected find that alkaline hydrogen water from a water ionizer tastes more delicious than a neutral water from a booster. I have been watching the water scene intensively since 2004 and I can only advise anyone to listen to their senses. Try the difference. Who does not taste it should choose a booster. Because hydrogen is the main purpose of all devices. However, if you only want a booster, you should be really careful when choosing your mineral water or at least get yourself a good water filter for your home. Both together today cost a maximum of 400 euro. In any case, you should end the eternal water hauling. This is in the long run not only heavy on your wallet, but also on the intervertebral discs. What's in it for your orthopedist? Of course, the most comfortable is when you have both. Even a simple water ionizer with a seven electrode cell will give you 1200 ppb and a pH of 10.6 in one minute. If you boost it then for 10 minutes, you already have 3300 ppb of hydrogen. You may not need that much, but when on the move, it is ideal if you can simply refresh the water with hydrogen. If over time it has lost its hydrogen. Speaking of refreshing, do not believe that the human body is the only one refreshed by hydrogen water. See here, the lentil seeds germinate much faster with hydrogen water. You can also aid a wilted lettuce a bit to rejuvenate by letting it soak in hydrogen-rich water for a few minutes. Because hydrogen is the smallest of all molecules, it also easily penetrates through an eggshell and causes a significant 
increase of the electron supply in 30 minutes. 18 millivolt less redux potential already means a doubling. It means nothing else than freshness. Baby milk powder when mixed with typical baby water, the pH and redux potential is far removed from the ideal levels of fresh breast milk. When using alkaline hydrogen water, you come close to the ideal. But also athletes can significantly improve their biological attractiveness of the powder mixes to gain muscle by adding this water to the powder. These and other examples you can study in my already mentioned book on electroactivated water. Request it for free on this email I address. There you can also send me further questions, but please give me some time to answer. Please also watch my interview with the most advanced expert in the medical use of hydrogen gas, Tyler LeBaron. You can stop the video and take the photo of the QR code and then listen to the video. Many thanks. Thank you.